In this video, we're going to learn how to generate a random string using C. We'll go over two techniques to solve this problem. In the first technique, we'll start off with a string of possible characters to include in our randomly generated string. Then we'll build a string by continually selecting a character from the string at random. So the first thing we'll do is include the string.h library because this library includes a function called strlen, which is going to help us by finding the length of a string. And we'll also include the stdlib.h library because this library includes a function called rand, which is going to help us to build our random strings. This library also includes the malloc and free functions, which we'll use to dynamically allocate and free the memory where our strings are going to be stored. And we'll also include the time.h library because this library includes a function called time, which we're going to use to seed the random number generator. So we're going to use that rand function in stdlib.h to produce our random strings. Each time we call the rand function, it's going to return a random non-negative integer. But the rand function uses what's called pseudo random number generation. What that means is we need to seed the random number generator with a number that's different each time our program runs in order to ensure the rand function can give us a different sequence of random numbers each time our program runs. Now, if we call the time function and pass it null, it's going to return the current time. And the current time is going to be different each time our program runs. So we can use this as our seed value. We'll pass the seed value to the srn function to set the seed value where the srn function is coming from the stdlib.h library. Then we'll declare a function called random string one to randomly generate a string using our first technique. The function is going to return a pointer to that string. So we'll have car pointer for the return type. The first parameter is going to be int size, which is going to be the size of the string, including the null terminator. Then we'll have car star possible where this is going to be the string containing the possible characters to include in the randomly generated string. So when we call this function, the idea is we'll have a string of the possible characters to include. So maybe this string could be uppercase A, B, C, and D. And we can store this into a car array called possible with car possible is equal to this string. Then when we call random string one, we could pass it, let's say 20, and then possible. And the idea is the function is going to generate a string, which is going to be 19 characters in length, and then one more character for the null terminator. And the string will consist of characters that have been randomly selected from the string possible. The function is going to return a pointer to the string, which we could store into the car pointer variable, let's say new string. Then we could output this new string with printf, and we'll have new string colon, and then percent %s to output the string, followed by a new line with backslash n, and then we'll output the new string. Next, we can define the function. So we'll copy this, and then paste it down here. And the first thing we'll do is check if the size is less than or equal to zero. Because we can't have a size that's less than or equal to zero, we need to have at least one character for the null terminator. So if this is the case, we're going to return null, because we can't generate any string at all in this case. Now possible is supposed to be a pointer to a string like this containing the possible characters to include in our string. If possible is somehow null, we can't do anything. So if possible is equal to null, in that case, we're going to return null because again, we can't do anything. And there does need to be at least one possible character. So we'll also check for that. We'll first find the length of the string possible using the string length function strlen. So we'll have here strlen and we'll pass it possible. So this function is going to return the length of the string possible, not including the null terminator. And we'll store that into a variable called possible length using int possible length is equal to the return value. Now the possible length does need to be at least one. So we'll have here if possible length is equal to zero, then again, we're going to return null because again, we can't do anything in this case. Then we'll allocate space for a new string on the heap using malloc. So we'll call malloc 
and we'll pass it size as an argument, and malloc is going to allocate space on the heap for size number of bytes, and a car in C is going to take up one byte in memory. We'll store the pointer returned by malloc into a car pointer variable called string. So string is going to be a pointer to that new block of memory on the heap where we're going to store our string. Now, because size includes the null terminator, the actual length of our string is going to be one less than size. So we'll have here int length is equal to size minus one to calculate that length. Now to set each index of our string to a character randomly selected from the possible string, we'll create a loop with a counter variable i, which we're going to use to go through each index of our string with each loop iteration. So i is going to begin at zero. We'll have i go up to, but not including length, by one with each loop iteration. So if, for example, our string has a size of five, that would mean our string has indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to store the null terminator at this last index here to end the string, where this last index here will always be equal to length because length is size minus 1. And then at each of these indexes here, we want to store a character that is randomly selected from the string possible. So in this loop, we have the counter variable i begin at 0 and go up by 1 with each loop iteration until i reaches length then we stop the loop. So when the loop is done, we'll actually assign at the index length the null terminator to end the string. Then in the loop body here, we'll have string at the index i is equal to a character from the string possible. And what we'll do is randomly determine the index of the string possible that we assign to our string at the index i. So here we'll use the rand function. The rand function is going to return a random integer in the range of 0 to some very large positive integer. But we want this index to be in the range of characters of the string possible, where the range of characters in the string possible is going to be from 0 up until, but not including, possible length. So for example, let's say that here we now have the string possible. And let's say that possible contains the characters a, B, C, D. In this case here, the string possible has a length of four, and we want to set each index of our string to one of these characters here from the string possible between the indexes zero and three, where three is really going to be possible length minus one in the general case. What we could do to get this integer to be in that range of zero to possible length minus one is divide it by possible length. So for example, if we take this integer here and divide it by four, the only possible remainders are zero, one, two, and three. And this is exactly the range of indexes that we want. So the modulus operator in C percent is going to give us the remainder of a division operation. So here, if we have modulus possible length, this will give us the range of indexes from zero to possible length minus one at random. Now the last thing we'll do is return the pointer to our string. So we'll have here return string to do that. Then up here, we'll free the dynamically allocated memory with free and new string. So we'll have free and new string to free that memory. And then if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll get the string here made up of 19 characters randomly selected from the string possible. Now, one thing we could do to improve our program is use the type size underscore t instead of int. Most viewers are probably more familiar with the type int. Size underscore t though stores potentially larger positive integers and functions like string length actually return a value of the type size underscore t. So by using the type size underscore t, we could account for potentially larger strings. Let's do that. Instead of int here, we'll have size underscore t for the size. And then down here in the function definition, we're going to replace all the occurrences of int with size underscore t. So here we'll have size underscore t, and then the same here and here, and the same for our counter as well. 
And because size underscore t values can't be negative, they're going to be between zero and some very large positive integer. What we'll also do is just check if the size is equal to zero because it can't be less than zero. So if we save compile and run the program, it'll work the same way. But now we can handle larger strings. Now there's a second technique we could use. This technique is going to involve randomly selecting characters from a range of ASCII characters. We'll call this function random string two. And this function is also going to return a pointer to a character. So we'll have car pointer for the return type. And the function will accept as an argument the size of the string to randomly generate, including the null terminator. So we'll have a parameter size underscore t called size. Then we'll copy this and implement the function down here. And the first thing we'll do is check to see if size is equal to zero, because if it is, we can't really do anything. So in that case, we're going to return null. Then we'll dynamically allocate space for a string of this size. So we'll have car star string is equal to malloc size again. And again, we'll calculate the length of the string. So we'll have size underscore t length is equal to, and we'll have size minus one because length is going to be one less than size because size includes the null terminator. Now, as before, we'll use a loop with a counter variable i to go through each index of our string from zero up until length minus one. So we'll have four size underscore t i is equal to zero. I is less than length and then I plus plus. And with each loop iteration, we're going to set the string at the index I to a character that's randomly selected from a range of ASCII characters. Then when we're done, we're going to set the string at the index length to the null terminator to terminate the string. And as before, we're going to return string here. Now the different part here is where we're going to be setting the random character. In C, car values are really integers. So here if I had string at the index i is equal to 65, this would actually set the string at the index i to the character uppercase A, because the character uppercase A is represented with the integer 65. We can look at this ASCII table here to see what characters are represented with what integers. So for example, the exclamation mark is represented with the integer 33. And we can see uppercase A is represented with the integer 65 and so on. All the way down here to let's say 126, which is the tilde character. So what we could do is generate a random integer in the range of let's say 33 to 126, which was the integer for that tilde character and we could assign that integer to the string at the index i. So to do this, what we could do is add to 33 a random integer in the range of zero to 93, because this would give us integers in the range of 33 to 126. So what we'll do is add to 33 rand and then modulus 94 because rand modulus 94 with the same thinking as before is going to give us an integer in the range of zero to 93. And when we add that to 33, we'll have an integer in the range of 33 to 126. Let's now try this function out. Up here, we'll now call random string two, and it only has one argument. So we can then save compile and run the program and again, we'll get a random string made up of 19 characters. This time though, they've been randomly selected from a range of ASCII characters. Now, one more thing we could do to improve both functions is check to make sure malloc worked because if malloc can't allocate memory, it's going to return null. So here we could have if string is equal to null, then return null. And we could do the same thing in our other function too. So down here we'll have if string is equal to null, we're going to return null. And like before, if we save compile and run the program, we'll get a random string here. So this is how we can generate a random string using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.